Are you a fan of pro wrestling, comedy, and combat sports? Then we have the podcast for you, because we cover that and much, much more. Do you like to debate with your friends? Do we have the perfect segment for you? It's the 531, where we take any given subject, break it down to a top five. From there, we debate it down to three, and then into that number one spot. If you want to get a hold of us, find us on our social media. Search Working Fans Podcast on any major social media platform. And if you want to find the podcast, search for us on any major podcast platform, as well as YouTube. Working Fans Podcast. We put in the work so you don't have to. Everybody, it's the Working Fans Podcast, Wrestling Podcast. Uh, I think we're like episode one twenty four. Man, Oof. we are uh, putting in Oof. that. Um, so that's because we. That's why. That's because we put in the work, so you don't have to. We hit him with it at the end. Come on now. <laughs> oh. Top five storylines of the year. Um, this was not an easy one. No, well, yeah, I think we all, we, we both know who we probably thinks going to be the winner, but it's interesting because I was just saying like. For me and you personally, I don't think of like I like storylines. Obviously, wrestling's all about story, but I don't really think about storylines in a moment. I think about like the feuds like, and the and, and the culmination and yeah. Well, storyline and feud to me is the same thing. Storyline and feud is kind of the same thing, right? So I guess I just don't think about it in terms of like storyline. I think we don't I think, think about, about it as storylines. We don't think about it as storylines because we don't think of it as a soap opera. We we think of it more as the actual action. It's and, real, God damn Yeah, it. what culminates to it? It's still real to me. Oh, I love it. So real. I you know like. Yeah. But when you're in the moment, you don't think about the fact that there's literally people in the back that are drawing up these storyboards and are coming up with these storylines ahead of time. Sure, so. and I mean the wrestlers obviously, well, at least definitely in other places, probably pitch in for the most part and stuff. Yeah, too. as long as you're not in the WWE, well, you, yeah. you definitely get to pitch in for the most part. Yeah, I was gonna say. I mean, I bet you Roman probably has some say. Yeah, no. If you're, you once you get to, we both know that once you get to a certain level, you get to pitch in. Yeah, you're, yeah but, but but there there are certain levels where you just want to keep your mouth shut and do what they tell you to. I'm gonna read my list to start off. Sure. Um, I got Hangman chasing after the belt. Really? Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm just gonna start off with it. Um, because wait, wait, to, wait to bring the big one out first. I got Punk returns. Yeah. Um, and I figured, you know, I mean, it, it was kind of a storyline because they like I couldn't call it just a return, but they hinted at it. They, right? You know, we had Darby come out. I want to wrestle the best sure. in the world. And, if that's a storyline, that might actually deserve to be the winner. That's a... yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah we can argue that. Um, Omega belt collector. Um, yeah. I saw somebody had this too, and I, I stole this one. Um, but I kind of like it. I mean. Because I never like anyone going around and chasing belts in different companies was always kind of a dream of mine. Sure. So, uh, and this one, I, I'll just tell you right now, uh, I'm going to read this list coming up. But Jesse from New Hampshire, I stole this from you. Cardona Deathmatch King. And I thought to myself, the guy did a really good job of not only reinventing himself, but getting GCW hot in the process. If I, if I had told you three years ago, Zack Ryder. Yeah. Is going to become the deathmatch king. You would have thought I was absolutely insane. Oh yeah, it makes no sense. Actually, it's funny because I just watched uh, Impact last night, and they had a main event match. It was him and uh, William William Morrissey, formerly Big Cass, and uh, it was like a DQ finish. But in the so end, now of- he sounds like he's the head of like a modeling agency. Yeah, Welcome to the William Morrissey Agency or a cigarette company, maybe. I don't yeah, know. sure. But you know, like he he ends up. Um, Morrissey and Moose end up fighting, and then he ends up uh, after Moose is out, he knocks Morrissey out of the ring. And their close the closing segment is Matt Cardona with the impact holding up hands. Now I don't know, I don't think Matt's gonna win it. I don't think I think they're setting up Josh out. Well, that's not the only person that he actually attacked with a belt this week. That's what I was gonna say. So <laughs> take that. Talk, talk about a belt collector. And then earlier, like you know, this week as we were recording this, um, 
he interfered uh, at NWA Hard Times, and he ended up picking up that belt too. Which he didn't win it, but he, he literally picked it up. But he literally could be in line to go after the Impact, NWA, GCW. Have all three of those belts. It would be if he did that. That would be an amazing twenty. The belt collector. Screw you, amazing. Kenny Omega. <laughs> But nonetheless, good job. And he's got him. Chelsea Green. That's a hell of a belt. He's he's doing all right for himself. <laughs> Actually, I saw something. Um, oh man, Miz challenged Edge at day one, yes. and Cardona was on uh, social media, and he said, "So I guess Miz is going to skip my uh, marriage or my ceremony or wedding." <laughs> yeah, because uh, must be on the same day he's getting married, and <laughs> just like, I got plans, son. <laughs> In uh, fairness to in fairness to Miz, I don't think he booked himself into the match. Probably not. <laughs> uh, and I, I thought this one from Jesse too. Although I probably actually would have put this on myself. The whole bloodline thing with Roman, the sure. Uso, with Paul. It's probably the best thing going in WWE right now. Uh, it's a good storyline. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Well, again, probably the best thing going in WWE right now. There are other stuff too, but I mean, you know. I like Roman. The storyline's been a little inconsistent with the way the um, cousins. Um, argue, didn't argue. Who's to blame for what? Who's doing what? The the bloodline itself storyline is a little. To I, me, I know what you mean. Like there are points where Romans beating him up, and yeah. like where are we going with this? But then we don't go anywhere with this. They're all yeah. falling in line. But I guess that's yeah. the storyline. I guess that's the storyline. <laughs> you have a problem with that when other to, to to me, it's a better storyline of um. What the hell is Paul Heyman's relationship still with Brock? How does that actually play out? What is going on here? Um, he stabbed Brock Lesnar in the back. That let's, doesn't seem like a smart thing to do. Let's go out of order then. Let's go with your fo- top five next. Too. Um, so for my top five, my number one was um, Dragunov versus Walter. Um, Dragunov actually fighting for the belt. Really, uh, to me, it was very similar to what they did in AEW. With uh, Hangman Page and Omega, you had Walter, who was the champion for, what, 500 and something days. Yep. And then you, he's being chased by the undersized underdog, Illy Dragunov, and Dragunov ends up pulling it off. To me, that's one of the storylines of the year. Um, I really enjoyed that, and I enjoyed the payoff on it, so that was fantastic. Um, another great storyline from me, from NXT, was actually Cameron Grimes and L.A. Knight. Oh, sure. I, I, I enjoyed that, bringing in Ted DiBiase, um, the money, the aspects of it. I thought it was well done, well played out. Um, that was very good. Um, I'm actually going to go back to NXT for another storyline. I think the storyline that they've done off and on for the last year between Raquel Gonzalez and um, her Kai. former partner, Dakota Kai, and them being a team, and then not being a team, the split up, the storyline, I thought it was all well done. Um, I think that Dakota Kai has done a great job of transforming herself through that storyline, and I think that that was really well done. Uh, I am going to go to AEW. you got to have Hangman Page on there, obviously, chasing Kenny Omega, Mm -hmm. overcoming his own personal demons. Um, It's a great storyline, very well done. Uh, I like the whole thing about it. And then, believe it or not, one of my most recent ones is also going to be from AEW, and I think that this was very well done. Uh, Chris Jericho and uh, his group versus America's um, top team. I've enjoyed that storyline. I like the way that it was done, how they spread it out over a little bit of time and how everything came together. So those are my five. Um, It's interesting. Um, uh, if you pick I Brock, think I went with some more obscure ones than some people are going to go with. It's, you went with Dragon off and Walter. Uh, I love that storyline. Um. I just watched the latest episode of NXT UK today, and that episode was where Mustache Mountain won the tag belts. Yeah. You had actually texted me. I, I know. I sent you a text. It's- <laughs> yeah. well, that's all right, because it actually made me want to see it. Like I might yeah. NXT UK, I like, but I, I watch it whenever. It's one of those ones where you might miss a week, so I sent right. you that so that you would definitely yeah. not miss the and the reason why I brought it up is because... But I didn't spoil my favorite thing from that show, and you're probably about to talk about it. Maybe, because you talked about Dragunov, and now we're setting up a storyline with him versus the Irish ace, Jordan Devlin. And I love both these guys. I love both these guys, too, and they're, Devlin is so fantastic. Uh, he almost made my list. That storyline that he had last year with having to overcome lo- losing his Cruiserweight title and then having to um, try to come back and fight for it and then to end up losing it again. 
that was a storyline I considered just because of how much I like Jordan Devlin. Mm-hmm. Um, this is, by the way, sidebar. This is a great show, NXT UK. Um, oh, absolutely. It reminded me of just the old NXT when it was an hour on the network. Like that little uh, story they, they showed, uh, I think her name is Armel. It was like the French angel. It's about yeah. hope. And they give this whole background how she didn't make it in the WWE before. And she got cut in a trial in Germany. She kept trying. She got actual tears in her eyes. Yeah. And, you know, like, and we're watching this. And they're also, um, like I said, we're set up the Jordan Del- Devlin, Devlin uh, Dragunov match. Uh, we had Mustache Mountain win the tag titles, which Tyler Bate is now the Triple Crown of that. Like he's yeah. Had the Heritage Cup. He's had if- the world title. Not only that, but if if you haven't checked out a lot of NXT UK, go back and look at what um, Kaylee Ray did before coming to um, regular NXT. She was another one who was a champion for over 500 days over there as the women's champion. The matches that she has with Ginny and P- and um, with Piper and freaking, it's just absolutely fantastic matches. And I, I'm sorry, I shouldn't call her Piper Niven. Dewdrop? <laughs> Dewdrop, sorry, with Dewdrop. Yeah. As, uh, for but for those of us that watched um, NXT UK, Piper Niven was fantastic talent over there, and check it out, please. Yeah, 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 it's good stuff. Um, yeah, really good show. I, it was interesting to me because like Pete, uh, Pete, uh, Tyler uh-huh. Bate, and Trent Seven were actually they were NXT tag champions, yeah. but, but that was the first time they actually won the NXT UK belts. They actually made you wait this whole time, which I don't know. It made it really seem more important. There's a storyline cooking here too with Trent Seven. Where he obviously had self doubt going in, he won the belt, and I still feel like they're actually setting seeds for eventually Trent Seven is going to retire. I think and have a fight. I think match. he's going to retire, and I think when he retires, it's uh, they'll it'll give Tyler Bay has been so over as a baby face. Mm-hmm. Imagine if he turns heel on Trent Seven, actually on his retirement. So how how what that would do for Tyler Bates as a heel. Tyler Bate, so <laughs> we're getting away from the subject completely, but that's all right. We'll go. We'll get back to it. Tyler Bate, I want to ask you about this. So um, he's such a great talent. Will he ever get the push in the States if he w- came over and mentioned that? Uh, unfortunately, I think he would get screwed over just like Pete Dunn's been screwed over. Um, Pete Dunn is a main event talent and could be a main event talent at any time and, uh, on the WWE, level, on the SmackDown, Raw, wherever you want to put him. Uh, he's another one who I hope that at some point his contract runs out, so maybe he'll get a shot somewhere. Um, but I think that, unfortunately, Tyler Bates would get the same treatment. He might have a little better of a chance just because he's got kind of a power lifter's physique at right. his size. So maybe he would get a little bit more of a chance. If somebody um, showed Vince him actually lifting up Walter with, like, the one hand, <laughs> I think – you know, Vince would probably the, really love this kid. But. The 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 problem is, is there's only so much room for little guys with power on the roster, and we've already got one who's an Olympic gold medalist there. So yeah, it might they, be hard to. <laughs> they don't even seem to give a shit about Chad Gable. Yeah, so. I, I I don't even think Vince knows Chad's still on the roster, or he might he might get caught. Um, I got um just from New Hampshire's list. Let's get back on track here. He's got uh Cardona Death Match King again. That's I, a good one. Uh, he had the range button line. I also stole that, but he also has CM Punk's return. We had that the same, but that was actually not on purpose. Uh, yeah. Punk versus MJF, which is great. Um, it just it's just started. such a new storyline. I yeah, didn't want to include is. it in there. It is yeah. a good storyline. It is in this year, but yeah. I think that it's going to carry more into next year. Uh, and then he's got Danielson's American Dragon return. Also very good, too. I like that. It's just, to me, if you're going to go with a storyline with Danielson, the way he's working his way and beating the shit out of the freaking um, Dark Order and the way he's turned heel, to me, is a bit better storyline than his entrance. Uh, no problem. Um, yeah, I really do enjoy his heel turn right now, everything he's doing. Um, oh, I love his heel turn. Yeah. The, yeah. the only thing that I regret is he hasn't had a chance to stop a hole in Anna Jay. She seems to really want to get in there and actually mix it up. I kind of. I mean, <laughs> tell I me that. Tell me that would not take him over the top as a heel. It's funny. He just... I said I wouldn't be mad. Like I'm agreeing with you. That's not what I'm about to say. I'm no selling you. But I, I wouldn't be mad if Danielson won the world title. Uh, he will eventually. Yeah, but I mean, like even now, like it wouldn't bother me as much. Like I like Hangman, um, but I don't know. Yeah, but how many storylines does Hangman have? I don't, you know, I hope currently how many storylines does Hangman have? Right. I don't know. I don't know. Now, now, now here's the big money draw and here's something that could happen. 
CM Punk has said now that he's interested in going after the title. Danielson beats um, Cowboy, and then freaking by cheating, obviously, the whole crowd's going to be even more pissed off at him because everybody wants Cowboy to be the champion. So he he gets beat, and now you've got CM Punk overcome uh, MJF, and it's freaking CM Punk versus um, freaking uh, Danielson. But uh, not only that, yeah, no, against Danielson. And now you've got babyface CM Punk versus heel Brian Danielson in a mic war. That, that's absolutely insane. Uh, I would like to point out something. On the last show, and I know this is off topic, right, MJF. Because we are going to be a little behind by this, but go ahead. Yeah, a- a- MJF. Um, well, yeah. When, this is going to obviously drop at a different time, but MJF, when they were in Long Island, he definitely planted some seeds and showed what the crowd reaction could be like if he turned babyface. Oh, sure. And he could definitely at some point turn babyface because he's that good of a heel. Right. That's um, a really that, over heel makes a great babyface. Yeah, and the way he played the crowd was, should I go back? Shouldn't I go back? Should I? That was absolutely phenomenal. That's a, but we're way off topic now. All right, let's go. Uh, well, actually, why don't you read me a list? Who do you have here? Oh, hold on. I forgot that you sent me lists. <laughs> I sent you two of them. Working off the cuff. Gotcha. Well, I've, you- I've got Mrs. St. John's baby boy, yeah. and he's got Hangman finally beating Omega. Uh, he's got Omega the belt collector. Edge versus Rollins, which is one that almost made my list. Mm. Uh, but I got tired of the feud, to be honest with you, and that's why I didn't make my list. Uh, MJF and Jericho, Labor of Jericho. I thought that was well done. That's a good one. Big E winning with the money in the bank, winning it, and then um, ended up cashing it in. Another good storyline. Um, a lot of those came close to my list, but just didn't make it. All right, I'm going to give you uh, Randy Osga's list. Randy and Friend, actually. I'll give you both his list. Randy mm-hmm. the Terrace list, too. He's got CM Punk coming back to Chicago. Roman Reigns versus Jey Uso. So it's very specific on that one. MJF and CM Punk, Adam Cole's debut in AEW, Brian Dan. So this one is more of just a match to me. Brian Danielson versus Omega. Um, but I mean, there was a little bit there. Uh, then I'll go to Randy. Randy's got the Forbidden Door, which isn't a bad one. I didn't think about that, you know. Um, Ring of Honor wrestling going out of business. That's shoot, brother. Uh, um, CM Punk making his return after seven years. Uh, WWE recently leasing so many wrestlers this year. Eh? And Matt Cardona with GCW, which I would think will qualify under the Deathmatch King, like um, Jesse's talking. So, um, uh, Speaking of returns this week, uh, AEW, and once again, we don't record this in order, so this is going to be a little bit past that, but the return of Trent to the best friends this week, and how awesome did was that, and how great did he look? He looked great. I didn't hear anyone say this, but he reminded me a little bit of Moxley with the look there. He did. He's he's trimmed down a little bit. I think the back surgery that he had, because he ended up having back surgery, ended up causing him to trim down quite a bit and obviously um, cut his hair, and I thought he looked phenomenal. I'll tell you a story, though, um, you might not have picked up on. I watched an interview they had the best friends do with Barstool, (laughs) Barstool Sports, and uh, it was the day of the show in New York. And it had Trent, Chuck, and Orange Cassidy. And Trent had long hair. This was the day of. He had long hair. And he was talking about, you know, I'm not sure when I'm coming back because of my neck and everything. And, that. and he came back that night. So when I watched that. And I, I'm like, oh, you son of a bitch. <laughs> like, good for well, you. Well, he came back that night and got a haircut. He did? Oh, yeah. So I was wow. Yeah. I was like, Dude, that, that, good job playing the world. Jesus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, now, I had said, when Randy said Ring of Honor wrestling going out of business, that's a shoot. Also, WWE releasing so many wrestlers of the year, that's also a shoot. Yeah. Why don't you go to Jake's list right now? Because I, I Oh, actually- there's a shoot on there. Yeah, I, I've, been, I've been waiting for this one. Right. Um, Here's the shoot for you. Kenny Omega is the belt collector. No, that's not it. Kenny Omega, the belt collector, is one of his. He's got the return of the American Dragon, Brian Danielson, or Daniel Bryan, or whatever you want to call him. And the ensuing heads getting fucking kicked in. Yeah. Um, CM Punk's return. Hangman Page working towards the AEW title. And here's the shoot, brother. Vince McMahon being completely out of touch with reality and continuing to ruin great talent. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that might be the storyline of the year. 
It is interesting, right? I, I'm wanna... sad. I'm sad. I didn't put that on my list. Uh, um, I want to. Matter of fact, for that one, Jake, you are now Mrs. St. John's favorite baby boy. Congratulations, <laughs> you've overcome. Uh, we're, we're gonna, we're gonna, we I have one more list to get to. So I'm going to read this, and then we'll, we'll start talking. If about this it. person's got a better one, I'm not making them over Jake for Mrs. St. John's. No, baby but uh, it's Mike Flynn. Who, uh, well, uh, well, he is part of their family. Dude, he was running around in Cali all day. And he had uh, somebody who's a runner of his, coaches, I guess, in, um, uh, in San Diego. So he's in California all day, and he hit us with a list still. Just And I got this list. Wow, last way, way to tell everybody where Mike is. What if they were looking for him? What, if, was he was, what if he was in witness protection, and now you've the given it up? he's recording, he'll be back to somewhere else. So. Oh, thank God. Woo. Uh, but, I'm uh, just yeah. watching out for you, Flynn. He's got the Hangman Page storyline, the Bloodline storyline. Inner Circle versus Pinnacle, and uh, not a lot loved it. But oh, oh, see, he said not a lot. But Edge and Orton, so he enjoyed the Edge Orton storyline, and Walter Dragonoff, much like you, he had that Good in call. there as well. Uh, now, did, and- now he, although he liked the Inner Circle versus the Pinnacle better than um, versus America's Top Team, I actually enjoyed the America's Top Team better. I thought the Pinnacle one. Dragged dragged down a little bit. Dan and Lambert really made that whole. I thing. thought Dan Lambert made it, and when they told me Dan's going to be back in a couple weeks this week, I was like, "Hell yeah, Dan's going to be back!" So in a couple weeks. Like he's just somebody who just loves <laughs> wrestling. He plays this heel. He he knows how to make an ass out of himself when he has to. He knows. Yeah, how to I was keep- excited. I was like, "Yeah, Lambert's coming back." Yeah, he's like, to me like he's a combination of like Bobby Heenan and maybe like a hate. Not saying he's on that level, but like he'll cut. Would you like serious shoot almost like cut you down? But then he'll also make an ass out of himself too. It's like, I'm- oh, absolutely. It's, it's fantastic. I also enjoyed that the uh, two of them actually pointed out they're like, oh, of course Cody Rhodes is going to get the shot for the freaking um, TNT title. Why would we get it? Right. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's some. There's that. Um, so I think without really even doing a tally this week, I think we know. Um, I think That's- the top three to me is going to be Hangman Page is going to be in there. Um, I think CM Punk returning to Chicago made a few lists here. It um, did. And then I will, you see, maybe you'll disagree. I'm going to, and the other one I thought was Omega Belt Collector was in here a few times. So I actually think that, um, believe it or not, um, Matt Cordona and the GCW title made more lists than CM Punk did. I could be wrong, but I think, I think he actually did the job here to Matt Cordona. <laughs> Yeah, I definitely didn't do the job. The card. No, no, GCW and that deathmatch um, championship that made a lot of lists. Okay, so you want to put that on there? You want to keep Kenny as the belt collector? Yeah, you I think that, one. Do you I think, Roman? well, Blood I mean, it, you, okay. I mean, if you're gonna do that, you could do Punk instead of the belt collector. But I thought the top three were actually the two Kenny Omegas with uh, one with Hangman Page and then GCW. Okay, so Kenny as the belt collector and his feud with Hangman, and then. GCW, oh. yeah, death man, right. death championship. I thought the death match had more than the belt collector did, to be honest with you. I, I could be wrong point. when we count it up, but I mean, let's talk about. It. We're not going to count it up. <laughs> we're just going to do that. I, I can tell you that even though it didn't get as many votes, Vince McMahon being completely out of touch with reality and continuing to ruin great talent might be the storyline of the year. I'll tell you what, something <laughs> we're going to be doing in the future. Uh, I don't think you even know this, but um, me and Joe breaking news, talking. folks. Breaking news. Me and Joe have been talking and. Um, since we've been running, you know, through a lot of five three ones, and we've been doing them for like a little over two years now. Uh, this year coming, we're going to do something a little different. We're going to have a week where we profile a territory, a week where we profile a wrestler, and then there's a couple other weeks we're going to do some other stuff too. Um, but profiling a wrestler, I was thinking about. It. I don't. I I seen Joe had some ideas. I can't remember if this guy was this, but I feel like Matt Cardona at this point. I almost want it. Like, what an interesting guy. Like. Oh, absolutely. Bond, the man defeated like, the, the man heads that then become in like he defeated cancer as a child. I forgot about that. He yeah, had cancer that. as a child. Hmm. Um, had a make a I think he was a make a wish child for Christ's sakes. And then he actually ended up living his lifelong dream of making the WWE, which ended up being a nightmare. And then <laughs> may uh, think about all he did with the like st- uh, the storyline. Um what was it? Long Island, freaking Ice Tea, or whatever he was there. The 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 he was one of the first YouTubers. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 Social media. 
Um, he, he was one of the first people to really use that. He made a huge name for himself to a point where the WWE couldn't ignore it, and then they got pissed off and just didn't use him anyways. Okay, I just wanted to, I wanted to clarify this story because I wanted to make sure. Um, it, yeah, so it doesn't say anything about Make a Wish, but it does no, say I, I didn't think he was actually a Make a Wish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was just, but it said while in high school he overcame a form of cancer that had started in his foot and spread to his lungs. He was forced to. Uh, I mean, do you know how much can how far cancer has to go to get from your foot to your lungs? He was forced to miss the year of school. Uh, so, so, so she, uh, um, that's that's pretty serious. Yeah, which report? Uh, Zach Wright talks about his battle with cancer. Okay, so yeah, it's in a few things here. So that yeah, I mean, it's a the guy's a hell of a like uh, comeback story. But like you said too, like he really got over with the fan base, and really it kind of made WWE get a bad look because they did give him the U.S. title, but then. They never completely pushed him. They would only go so yeah. far. Yeah. They even gave him, um, what's her name there? The um, one who ended up marrying one of the Gracies. Oh, Eve. Yeah, they gave him Eve, Tor- uh, Eve Torres there for a little while as a little sidekick. While. And then, and then, com- a- and, that, and then completely had her turn on him and jumped yeah. him out to gain. Kicked him in the nuts, I think. Yeah. 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 That's oh. a, the WWE does not care what fans think. Yeah. I think they even wanted to run a segment with him after he was already cut with Chelsea Green. They asked him if it was all right they could use his house for his pool. Yeah. He was a little pissed off about that, too. They're like, we want to do a segment with Chelsea Green. Do you mind if we use your pool for it? Right. <laughs> Poor guy. <laughs> we, we know we just cut you. Yeah. <laughs> but but seems, yeah. seems right. So I'll tell you what. Just saw that. Um, Cardona, I'll even put him over the bell collector. We'll put him at a number two. Um, I can't wait till we talk about him at some point a little in depth. Uh, however, to me, the Hangman Page storyline, it's not only this a storyline this year. This thing has been going on since the inception of AEW. Like, this whole battle with his self-esteem. And it's such a tricky thing well, part- to kind of maneuver. Because if you don't um, do this right, he can look like he's a wimp and nobody's going to like him. But he did it in a way where he walked that line where he was still winning matches. But it was just he would lose the big one. But he was if, so close. Yeah, if you if you did it wrong, it just ends up looking like Brian Myers. <laughs> nah, that's just not necessary. <laughs> Although I don't know if we're going to be doing anything on Brian Myers, but maybe we will. <laughs> um, so I think here's something we should think about doing for the for the end of this. I think that overall we're very positive. We're very positive. I think you can agree with that show for the most part. We talk about the things that we enjoy. We don't really stop a mud hole in too many things. I think maybe it's time we start discussing the shit that goes wrong. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. Yeah. We could have something. Yeah, maybe that. Uh, I think people might want to hear a little bit more about that shit that doesn't go right. <laughs> so, but on that note, we are going to pick Hangman Page as the. Oh, absolutely. Uh, yeah. Hey, hey is- man, Hangman Page. They played it out all year, maybe a little bit into last year, quite frankly, and they made us feel horrible for this guy. Everything he had to overcome, everything that he had to fight, all the obstacles. Um, he went and had a baby. That's not easy to become a champion after having a baby. He got his figure back right away, though, so he looks good. Um, but it was a great storyline. It played out for a year, and it deserves to be storyline of the year. Yeah. I actually kind of thought about Becky Lynch. That's pretty impressive. It's like with The shape she's in. Oh, are you kidding me? She looks yeah. fantastic. Almost yeah. almost, almost like um, her um, husband, boyfriend, whatever he is now, Seth Rollins runs a CrossFit gym. Yeah, they, apparently they, they work out <laughs> together, I guess. <laughs> but on that note, Hangman Page, storyline of the year, folks. And uh, thanks for stopping in.